Hey everyone and welcome back to Battleborn. On this video I'm gonna show you a build for Ambra that I call the Raging Furnace. Uh, now this is a really aggressive build for Ambra and uh, it works wonders for me. And before I get started there is a pre prerequisite for running this build if you want to do it exactly the way that I am and that is you need to get Ambra to level 15 and you also need to complete all of her lore challenges to pick up her legendary item. Alright, so let me show you the helix choices that I make. Uh, so for level 1, I go with Illumination, add a damage over time to my Solar Wind, which I'm going to be using a lot. Uh, level 2, going to the left for Blessing of the Sun, going to uh, increase the health regeneration from my Sunspots. Level 3, I go with Blood Drive on the right to increase my Life Steal from my Staff. Um, now you could just as easily go left on this one for ceremonial sacrifice to heal your allies more, but I prefer the lifesteal because, like I said, I play this really aggressively and I need whatever help I can get to stay alive. Level 4, I go with Searing Wind, increase the damage of the Solar Wind the closer I am to the enemy. Level 5, I go to the left for Cauterization. Uh, that will give me a 30% movement speed increase whenever my fl flame shield comes up, which is great for getting me out of a bad situation. Level 6 is going to be Solar Storm. Decrease the cooldown time on my Solar Wind so I can use it more often. Now level 7, this is the game changer. Going down the middle with Radiant Halberd. And because of my legendary item for Ambra, I'll be able to fire it off non-stop and the damage will not be decreased um, based on how much heat is consumed. As long as you can use it, then it's max damage and the legendary item gives me just enough heat to use it at will infinitely. So I can just fire it off Radiant Halberd over and over again and I'll never run out of heat. So it gives her a range attack that she wouldn't otherwise have. Level 8, I go with, uh, I go to the left to get Bask in the Light to uh, decrease the Sunspot cooldown so I can throw those out more often. Level 9, I go with Sweltering Wind on the right to increase Solar Wind's damage by 15%. And for level 10, I go with Impact Crater on the left to add a 2 second stun to my ultimate, which if anyone gets caught in that, it's pretty much lights out for them. It's hard to recover from a two second stun, especially after you just ate an ultimate that does a ton of damage. All right, so let me show you the gear. Let's hop over to that. And let's see, there's my Amber loadout. All right, so first one is her uh, legendary, 6% skill damage, 6% heal power. And, uh, of course, that amazing effect, the Staff of Radiance, slowly generates its own heat. Which, as I said earlier, Radiant Halberd, infinite because of that effect. Second item I go with is a Mending Remedy Box to increase my heal power and healing received. I'm s still a healer. I focus more on killing enemies, but I'm throwing down those sunspots. If my teammates are being aggressive with me, they're going to soak up the heals. Or, you know, the sunspots that I leave around the level, they can go and get themselves healed up. Plus, they're just going to heal me more, which I need to stay alive. So that's what I go with there. And then the third uh, piece of gear I like is Time Killer. Decrease my cooldown time quite significantly so I can use my abilities more often. Um, second Shield Recharge Delay down half of a second. And then another Shield Recharge Delay by 0.8 seconds if all of my skills are on cooldown which is almost in every situation that's almost the case if I need my shield back because I ran in I used all my skills and I either killed someone and I'm getting out or it was a little too rough and I'm getting out so I want to get out of there get my shield back up I can heal myself up with my abilities and get right back into the fray all right so now that you know how I've got it all set up and how I'm gonna use uh, how you should use your uh, helix choices. I'm gonna show you some highlights from my gameplay and try to give you some tips as you play this build. 
From levels 1 to 4 on this build, you're going to need to put your life on the line and charge at the enemy when opportunities present themselves. Additionally, you need to be picking up crystals as often as possible so you'll have enough to activate your legendary gear before level 7. Because of the amount of crystals you need, this build will only work as shown on incursion and meltdown game modes. Capture just simply doesn't have enough crystals available to get you your legendary item activated before the game ends. You'll also want to be clearing minion waves out to assist your team and get yourself leveled quickly, and Solar Wind paired with a Sunspot is great for taking them out. So when you engage your enemies, put down your Sunspots where you anticipate the fight will take place, so you've got additional healing outside of your life drain as well as extra damage on your enemies. Keep in mind that if your allies decide to be aggressive with you, then you're doing some nice healing on them as well, so getting paired with other aggressive players works out really nicely with this build. If the enemy decides to take down your sunspots, that's okay because at least it served as a momentary distraction for you to put in some more damage. Now, when you get in close, you want to hit your opponents with your solar wind, and if your heat is max or near max, smash them with your scorching strikes for big damage. And don't forget that scorching strikes can do critical hits too, so aim for the dome. Most players become overwhelmed very quickly and will try to run away from you if their shields and health are dropping quickly and you're more than capable of doing just that. If they do run away and you manage to get their health low, this is perfect for you. Chase after them and hopefully your solar wind will come off of cooldown which can be quickly activated and used while sprinting to give them that full blast, which is usually enough to finish the job. Now, once you've got your kill or kills, you can get your health back up with sunspots and get ready for your next assault. If you've gotten yourself into a situation you can't win, it's important to recognize that you're outmatched and get out of there, relying on your flame shield to give you enough of a buffer to make it back to safety. Likewise, if you and an enemy are both close to death, recognize that your flame shield will pop up if it's off of cooldown, and it will likely be enough for you to finish off your opponent in a close fight. Once the danger is passed, you can get your health back up while also healing any of your allies who are smart enough to stand next to your orbs and not run away from them like so many players do since they don't understand how sunspots work. This is the main reason I've stayed away from focusing on healing as Ambra because other players won't take advantage of the sunspots and they also refuse to stand still for you to heal them with your staff if you choose that particular augment. So let's show you some level 5 and 6 clips now because once you hit level 5 you unlock a new toy to play with, your ultimate. A lot of people complain about the amount of time it takes the crystal to explode and say that it's a useless ultimate, but I absolutely love it. Your aggressive playstyle in the match up to this point has likely put your enemies in the mentality of running away from you, or at least backing off when you charge them. This is exactly how you want them to respond to you when to use your ultimate well. What you want to do is place your ultimate behind them where they probably won't notice it, wait a couple of seconds, and then scare them into backing up by charging into them with a solar wind or some scorching strikes and BAM! Massive damage. You can also use your ultimate as a means to take out a particularly aggressive chaser that turns a corner after you and is met with a big old exploding crystal surprise. You don't have to always use the ultimate on players though, it's great for clearing out stronger minions like the elite bots that other teams can summon, and it'll put a serious hurt down on a sentry in incursion. I also will use it to deny areas to an enemy team and push them back or split their team apart. Now, once you get to level 7, things get really interesting with your Radiant Halberd ability, as it allows you to become a ranged character. Like I said earlier in the video, as long as you have your legendary item activated, at this point you can shoot out Radiant Halberd as much as you like and never run out of heat. The Radiant Halberd does quite a bit of damage, and once again, the amount of heat consumed does not affect the damage at all. You can still play super aggressively and charge at the enemy like you have been, or you can now hang back with your teammates, providing more healing from your sunspots and doing good ranged damage. I usually go somewhere in the middle of aggressive and supportive at this point, as dying becomes more of an issue because of the ever-increasing respawn times. 
It's great to have the option to no longer run into the fray to get your kills and it confuses the enemy too. The character that was hounding them at close range the entire game is now lighting them up from distance and they don't always know how to respond. They expect you to rush them and instead you're able to hang back shooting fireballs at them and daring them to come play with you and your sunspots. On top of that if they get brave and get in your face you've got a nice solar wind surprise waiting for them. So once I hit level 7 on Ambra, it usually allows my team to take complete control on a match and it's a real game changer, especially since I take high crystal cost gear and I'm starting to get those activated at that point as well to make me a powerhouse. That's a typical strategy I use in these games to bring high cost gear to dominate the late game as opposed to bringing low cost gear to get a boost early on and it's really working out well for me. So there you go folks, the Raging Furnace build for Ambra. I hope you can put it to use and we can see Ambra getting played a lot more in the game. I'll have a link in the description to a full match of Ambra using the build if you'd like to check that out. And I'd love to know how this build worked out for you, so please leave me a comment and let me know. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.